Hello students, uh, my name is Dr. Mark Branson. Uh, I'm the course designer for Math 135, Introduction to Mathematical Reasoning. Um, and this is the first video uh, for the course. So what we're going to do this semester is to look at uh, the idea of quantitative literacy, um, also known as quantitative reasoning, also known as mathematical reasoning, the class is Introduction to Mathematical Reasoning. Um, and we're going to look at this idea of what quantitative literacy is and kind of focus on some techniques that you can use to develop it. So um, first, just to start off with kind of an introduction, um, quantitative literacy is the ability to understand numerical information. So in the same way that literacy uh, is the, the ability to understand written information, right, that you can read something and understand what it means, Quantitative literacy is to look at numbers in the way that they're used in the real world and to understand what they mean and kind of what they imply. Um, so, for example, um, if somebody told you that the population of a town had increased by 200%, is that a lot? Um, what does that mean, that it's increased by 200%? Um, so, in fact, it means that it's been multiplied by 3, which is strange. And these are the kinds of things that we struggle with uh, as far as quantitative literacy. So if you don't believe me, think about it. If a town is, well, we'll talk about percentages in the next video, but um, if a town has 100 people in it and the number of people increases by 200%, how many people are there? Uh, and you'll see that there should be 300. We'll go over that one in the next video. But these are the kinds of things that we think, it's very easy to say, oh yeah, 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 I've learned this, I understand it. But a lot of times we struggle to to really think deeply about what these quantitative concepts mean. And so that's what we're gonna focus on in this class. How can you really look at something and understand what they mean by those numbers? Um, and then how can you make decisions based on it? So as part of your life, as part of your career, you're going to be using quantitative information in one way or another. Um, and that's regardless of what field you're in, you're going to interact with numbers. Um, and so, Understanding how they work uh, can help you to make sure that people don't rip you off, right? So, for example, if you're buying something, understanding what it should cost versus what it does cost. Um, knowing how to uh, see how financial mathematics um, interact with the world. Like, So, if you're borrowing money for a student loan, how much did you have to pay back? We'll talk about all of these kinds of things um, throughout the semester. So what you should focus on in developing quantitative literacy, so some things to think about, broadly speaking, over the course of the entire semester. When you see a number, think about what that number means, okay? So don't just approach it as, oh, that's a number, I need to do something to it, right? Because a lot of times that's how we approach mathematics, right? If we're doing the lesson, if we're learning about multiplication, then you see a number, you need to multiply it. Right? And so we approach it kind of from this rote, what do I need to do with this number? Think instead about what does this number mean? What does it signify? And how does it relate to the other numbers involved? Okay, so we're going to see this a lot in our first lesson on percentages. Um, what does that number in a percent mean? And how does it relate? What is it, how does it fit in with everything else and other kinds of numerical information that we see in the problem? Okay? So think about that. Always be asking yourself, what does this mean? If you're trying to solve a problem, be thinking about what am I trying to find and what does that mean, okay? Um, if you are uh, trying to solve a problem, first think about what you need to find. What are you looking for? And then think about how you can get it, okay? So this is, again, kind of a different approach. We like to think, oh, okay, this is a math class. So they're gonna teach me this method, and then they're gonna give me numbers, I'm gonna put them into that method, and then I'm gonna get an answer, right? But you need to think more critically. You need to think deeper about what they mean, how they fit together, and how you get the answer, okay? So keep those things in mind throughout the semester, no matter what you're doing over the entire class, and that will really serve you well to understand kind of where we're going with things in this class, okay? So the other things, um, just a few other things to kind of get started, 
Um, so one, there's a, an article um, in the Blackboard site that I'd like for you to read. It's um, about what differentiates students who succeed in math courses versus students who don't succeed. Um, and so I'll let you read the article, but the answer is, I think, surprising. I think we naturally believe that some people are good at mathematics, right? I am a math professor. I have a PhD in mathematics. I am good at mathematics, right? And somehow I sprang from the womb good at mathematics and I was destined to be so and have always been good at mathematics and that's just the way things are whereas other people are bad at mathematics and will always be mad at mathematics and there's nothing they can do to change that and that is not true um, scientists have studied this not mathematicians um, psychologists people who study learning have studied this and turns out that that's not the case so um, what we're going to try and do in this class is develop a growth mindset and that's the idea that we are getting better at mathematics we are practicing mathematics, we are learning things, and we are improving um, rather than being bad at mathematics or good at mathematics. Okay? So um, our next video will be on percentages. Uh, so that one will be the next one listed, and you can go ahead and watch that.